liquidity through two different lenses primarily, market liquidity and portfolio liquidity. With regards to market liquidity, we want to think about how instruments that we can transact in can typically be effectuated. For fixed income, it's primarily through over-the-counter. Thus, when we find during times of stress that liquidity can disappear, oftentimes with wider bid offers, lower efficiency, higher economic cost, we want to be mindful of how we transact risks for those clients in those portfolios and minimize cost and most importantly, maximize capital efficiency at that point in time. With regards to portfolio liquidity, we need to be thinking about how to construct portfolios that are potentially more resilient in these times of stress. Investors have increasingly become aware of the higher rates and higher yields that many central bank policies have brought to us over the past year. Fortunately, over the past 10 years, we've seen central bank policies do something else, cut off the left tail and right tail risks of many of the systemic concerns that we had post the global financial crisis. More importantly today, it's a systematic concern of deleveraging that we need to be focusing on. The higher cost of capital and higher rates are creating more volatility in the market and opportunity. For clients, we can actually see this volatility in real time. Looking at the front end of the yield curve here in the United States, even the interday volatility of looking at the two-year note as an example, we can see yields flummox around various points in time to historical proportions in terms of basis points. As we think about this systematic deleveraging, we want to be proactive in trying to insulate portfolios, focusing on the outlook, but also reconciling with changing market conditions where we can potentially take advantage of opportunities for clients. Investors might be finally breathing a sigh of relief, specifically because yields have moved higher in recent months. While these yields are higher, and for the first time in many years, cash and cash-like alternatives are in fact producing returns and in income for investors, there's actually increasingly apparent structural trades, a differentiation in yields amongst these strategies. Treasury bills, as an example, trade at a lower yield than even the Federal Reserve's benchmark rate that's set. So you're paying a premium for owning the security of owning a treasury bill through a lower yield. Bank deposits, while offering overnight liquidity, are also suffering the same consequences of lower yield on average, as investors and banks specifically do not need the liquidity. Finally, when we think about these strategies, short-term strategies, particularly those focused on capital preservation and liquidity management, offer investors a high-quality alternative that may offer investors a yield of more than 5% at this point in time. These higher yields obviously are a very drastic environment than what we've witnessed over the past few years. Investors should be proactive in terms of how they should think about cash management. And in today's landscape, we believe they'll be handsomely rewarded with those potential while remaining high in quality in short-dated, short-term strategies.